What is the worst experience you had on an airplane? Guy that sat a few rows behind me died of a massive heart attack. It was a flight from Kenya to Stockholm and I think I was around 11. They couldn't land, as we were right above the desert. So they just kinda put a sheet over him and stored him under the stairs. It was a double decker plane. I remember walking past the corpse on our way out the following morning and the sheet didn't cover his feet and I was 50% excited and 50% terrified that I had seen dead person feet. My wife farted. It freaking stank so bad that I could hear people complain three rows back. She pretended to be asleep. An air hostess walked up to me and started blasting me with some flowery air purifier. I got the full blame for it. I'm crying with laughter at the mental image of a flight attendant spraying you like a naughty cat. 14. Ish. Our flight from Vancouver, Canada to Shanghai, China. The old Chinese man beside me who spoke only Mandarin had really, really bad gas the whole way through. Things got really bad when he curled up in his seat to sleep, but pointed towards me so he could face his wife. Worst part? They were a super sweet couple as revealed through tons of smiling and nodding from each of us. And so I didn't want to make their flight worse by complaining to the flight attendant. I swallowed my pride and a whole lot of old Chinese male gas that day. Sitting on a 10 hour flight next to someone who obviously was really fricked up on sea or something. Doesn't sound that scary but I was a high schooler who had no experience at all with hard drugs. Ended up being a pretty nice guy. C seems like a poor drug of choice for when you have to sit for 10 hours. Sitting across from a young mom who had an infant and a 2 year old. She had her hands full with a 2 year old and so I offered to hold her baby. I'm a dad. I've fed and let sleep babies. She agreed and I held the baby. Fed her a bottle. Was patting her on the back to soothe her and let her fall asleep and she did fall asleep. But not before projectile vomiting in my face and down my shirt. On the bright side I'm pretty sure I earned karma that day. I had boarded a plane in Florida, exhausted after working 16 hour days filming for the past month and was ready to get home. I fell asleep and woke up two and a half hours later, excited that I had slept through the entire flight. Then I realized we were still sitting in the runway in Florida. An overnight flight, checked an online with an aisle seat but didn't realize it printed as middle until too late. Had a guy next to me trying to get comfy all night by putting his butt on my arm. That's until everyone woke up because while passing out customs forms, the flight attendants realized a gentleman had died in his sleep sometime in the last 5 hours. I hope they weren't both the same guy. My friend was sitting next to someone on a plane and the someone kept bumping his arm in a rhythmic fashion until my friend opened his eyes and looked to see what was up. Unfortunately what was up was the dude's dong and he was jerking it hard. My friend was pretty scarred. Something similar happened to me. Longest flight I've been on. Overnight Los Angeles to Sydney. Wake up 2 hours and with the hands of the guy next to me under my shirt. Trying to get into my pants. It was awful. My worst flight experience ever. And up there with one of the shittest things to happen to me ever. About to land. Typical message from the pilot talking about the weather etc. When at the end of the speech he exclaims no don't touch the then soon followed after a swift termination of the loudspeaker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. There is absolutely no reason to be alarmed. I've told this one before but here it goes. I had a colostomy bag for about 6 months to let my colon heal after an accident where it was perforated. I fell and was impaled on a barbed wire fencer post. On a plane. Coming off painkillers so I had really bad diarrhea. It turns out my colostomy bag is not attached correctly. Where the hole in my gut is not lined up with the hole in the bag. I'm dozing off when I feel warmth and smell this horrible smell of fresh crap. My colostomy bag leaked copious amounts of liquid crap all over the front of me. Stunk up the cabin badly. Had to go into the bathroom and try to get crap off of my dress shirt and slacks. Stayed in as long as I could. Came out soaking wet and about as embarrassed as I've ever been. This was a school trip. So we had close to 30 teenagers present. We were heading to DC from the west coast. With a layover in Chicago. Because of the large class size. We had to arrive at the airport around 5am so we could get through security. We made it to the gate area by 6am. And our flight was boarding at 7.30. However, they pushed the flight forward 30 minutes. Then 30 more minutes. 
then an hour, then another hour, until 4 hours had passed. Because they kept changing the time, we had to stay in the gate area in case of a sudden announcement. And my teacher spent almost $200 that day just to buy us lunch because we were planning to have an airline meal. We finally took off around 12.30pm. When we land in Chicago, it's 5.30pm with time zones adjusted. We are a horde of zombies by this point, since we had almost no sleep the night before due to excitement. We've missed our original connection by hours, and any other flights to DC that day are full. So we're booked onto a flight to Baltimore instead, which also gets delayed an hour. And once again, my teacher saves the day by buying us pizza for dinner. And my teacher is the type that buys gourmet pizza at a time like this, so she spent even more of her money like that. We take off at 8.30pm from Chicago. Everyone wants to sleep, but my teacher won't allow it because if we sleep, we'll be even more tired once we're woken up. With time zones adjusted, it's 11.30pm when landing in Baltimore. Guess what? Because of all the delays and airport switching, our luggage is lost. But the airline just tells us to keep waiting at the baggage claim, until it's almost 1am. Don't forget, this is a group of 30 sweaty teenagers who can't change their clothes. So after a 40 minute bus drive to DC, still no dosing off allowed, we locate our luggage, and get it. It's almost 2.30am when we finally got sent to bed, and we have to wake up in 6 more hours for the first day exploring DC. In all seriousness though, that was easily the most fun day of the trip. While stranded at the first airport, my teacher talked to a lady at the gate, who was a professional artist. After chatting a bit, my teacher arranged for my artist friend to show the lady some of her drawings, and she got some help on how to improve. My teacher also organized a drawing contest with a few students, while another group used a blank notebook to create a full roleplay game that lasted all 4 hours. One student who brought a book was reading out loud to not just our classmates, but to some of the other passengers as well. While waiting at the Chicago airport, one talented boy pulled out a Rubik's Cube and showed his skills for the entire gate area. It sounds horrible to explain, but I think it was actually my best experience on an airplane. I was sitting next to an adult with learning disabilities, and he shat himself right before takeoff. It was a transatlantic flight, next to a grown man sitting in a pile of his crap. Poor guy, but more pertinently poor me. I wouldn't call that a learning disability. A few years ago I used to be a DJ and got a few gigs on other cities. There was this great gig where I went with 4 other guys and we got wasted but went to bed relatively early. Except for one of them who kept binging almost until our almost until our it was a hot city and we stayed on the runway for a while. At some point I looked over and he was pale, looking like he was dying. The stewardess noticed him, said we couldn't fly with a zombie and cancelled the takeoff. The protocol was that a doctor from the airport had to check him, but there was a doctor on board that checked him with a stethoscope and said he was fine. So we took off and he drank tons of water on that hour flight. When we landed, the doctor said he was an ob who knew he was wasted, so he half assayed the diagnose just to get going. Made me laugh. Circling Atlanta because it was covered in a severe thunderstorm. We went round and round for over an hour. This was after a 4 hour flight from Phoenix. Pilot comes over the speaker with folks we're out of fuel so we're landing now. We started the descent and it went pitch black. It was dead silent in the cabin. You could hear alarms in the cockpit and the engines over revving like they were going to explode. It was terrifying. We would suddenly drop every few seconds. Just stray down and a startled gasp would echo throughout the passengers but they still stayed quiet. The pilot came back on and said we were about to touch down and to brace for possible impact. When we landed it felt like we just dropped 30 feet down instead of gliding down to the runway. You could hear the tires screaming on the wet pavement. Finally we came to a complete stop and just sat there for what felt like an eternity. Then we slowly started taxiing around to the terminal. The pilots came out and greeted people as they got off the plane. A couple of women hugged them. Most men shook their hands. I certainly did. When I shook their hands I could see that they were soaking wet from sweat. I think that's what affected me most. This wasn't routine for them and they were probably just as scared as the rest of us. I don't know why, but the way you told story had me on the edge the entire time. Like a well written short story. Very intense. Thank you. 
7.5 hour indirect flight, one stop, no plane change. I knew I'd be starting my period in the next couple of days so I was being overly cautious, checked right before I got on the plane and everything was fine. Plus, I can always tell exactly when I start my period because my cramps are horrendous. Put on a pad just in case. Good to go. Literally within minutes of taking off. Boom. Horrific. Soul crushing. Tiny demon juggling knives in my uterus level cramps. The painkillers I packed were in my checked bag. There is no way to sit on a plane that makes it any better. The entire experience was just constant. Excruciating pain. I'm honestly surprised I didn't vomit. It was so bad. I couldn't focus enough on anything. Movie. Book. Etc. enough to distract from it. I just sat there and held back tears and waited for death. For 7 and a half hours. No flight has ever felt so long. I haven't taken an indirect flight since. Next time if there are any other young ladies sitting near you, ask if they have anything in their purse. It's girl code law to give painkillers or tampons pads to any fellow woman in need without a single question. I'm not fond of flying to begin with and this was my nightmare fuel for months after. On a trip from Portland or to Las Vegas in December of 2005, the pilot comes on the radio about 15 minutes after takeoff and tells us we're about to hit a really rough patch of turbulence and that nobody can get out of their seats. I'll never forget his words this is going to get rough folks. I'm sorry, but we'll be okay. For the next 2 hours, I experienced exactly that. The worst turbulence I have ever experienced on a flight. This wasn't just minor bumps. This was up and downs and big dips into massive air pockets. The lights flickered a few times, luggage compartments opened and stuff fell. I was sitting in the rear and all I could hear clinks and clanks of the flight attendant drink trays. It was freaking awful. If you've ever seen the airplane scene from the movie Almost Famous, that's what it felt like. For 2 hours. Frick that crap. At the end of my trip to Canada all I had was a hoodie, no clean t-shirts. I chuck everything in the hold of the plane except my iPad and headphones. So I am queuing with my boarding pass and this dude behind me makes this weird sound but I'm British. So obviously I don't turn round. Get on the plane and the air conditioning is cold, like, R-E-A-A-L-Y cold. So I pull down my sleeves, put my headphones on and pull my hood up. Yeah, so anyhow, that dude had been sick in my hood. Why did nobody else standing behind near you warn you? Holy crap. I feel like if I saw some dude barf into a stranger's hood I'd be screaming my head off. Lady behind me brought her kid who screamed the entire 4 hour flight, kicked my seat, screamed some more, had a tantrum and was climbing over the back of my seat and shaking it furiously. Meanwhile, the mom is just sitting there smiling, not even apologizing or trying to correct the behavior at all. I had the worst headache when we got off. See, that's when I turn around and say something. I'm not going to hassle parents who are clearly doing the best they can with young kids who aren't handling flying well. They're trying. That's life. The end. But if you aren't even trying to control your offspring, I will comment. You're a parent. Parenting is your literal job. 2 to share. 1. I got food poisoning from chicken on a flight over to Ireland. It was wholly unpleasant. 2. I asked for a vegetarian meal on my way home from the same trip. I learned, and they forgot to have any veggie meals, so they gave me fish. I explained that I actually don't eat fish, so they took my meal away. I asked if I could have at least the bread and salad, but it was a no-go. Note, I had spent the night before at the airport and hadn't eaten in about 12 hours by the time I boarded the flight. Then the flight couldn't land so we were in a holding pattern. Then, at customs, I found out that my bag had incorrectly been marked as having live poultry. So I had to go through extra screening. I was once on an airplane sitting in first class. There was a man sitting in my row that was clipping his freaking toenails and they were flying in all sorts of directions. He then proceeded to take that long metal thing on toenail clippers, clean out his toe jam, and wipe it all over his seat. He wins the most treacherous human being award, Imo. Having the flight be delayed several times due to ground operations at O'Hare from 8am all the way to 5pm at the airport. Then finally board the plane only to sit there for 2 hours and be told that the crew had timed out so they went to find another crew. Another hour later, 
They announced they couldn't find another crew today, and we all have to deboard the plane. Then back in the airport they announced that the cancellation was due to weather so they would not be issuing any sort of credit or hotel reimbursement etc. Frick United. Happened to me a few weeks ago coming home from California. The fricking plane is on the runway and we take off at full speed to get in the air. All of a sudden at the last second the pilot slams on the brakes. It was fricking terrifying. Had to wait an hour for them to see what was wrong and spent the entire flight wondering if every bit of turbulence was something wrong. <laughs> Trying to go to sleep a couple of rows behind a kid with those light up shoes. His parents seemed oblivious to how much glare he was causing. Especially since the lights were darkened throughout the rest of the cabin. I was on a plane from Vancouver to Toronto. I had the window seat. The passenger next to me was begging me to switch seats as she wanted to take some photos out of the window. Reluctantly I agreed to switch places with her even though I really wanted something to rest my head against while I sleep during the flight. I was seated in between her and her husband. I had asked the husband if he would like to sit beside his wife, but for whatever reason he refused. I'm a bit shy so I couldn't insist any further the whole flight consisted of the couple loudly conversing over my head. The worst part was, about 30 minutes into the flight, the husband decided to take off his socks and shoes. The smell was so bad, I didn't have the courage to ask the man to put his shoes back on, but lucky the passenger in front asked a flight attendant to tell the man to put his shoes back on. The lady never ended up raising the window blinds to take pictures. My nose started bleeding and would not stop. Apparently, you don't clot at altitude. That was also the day I discovered that if you lock yourself in the toilets for too long, they bang on the door till you open it. I was shirtless, I'm female, and covered in blood. Literally happened yesterday, was perfectly on time for my flight. Waited 2 hours to get on because the wrong plane showed up and they sold too many tickets so people weren't going to fit. They took a nap, put all of the passengers names on it and clicked it to randomly choose people who weren't going to make it on the flight. Luckily it wasn't me. Once we all boarded, except the few and lucky, they found out that there wasn't enough gas in the plane to make it to where we needed to go so we had to make an extra stop. All of this combined made it where I missed my connecting flight leaving me now stranded in Iceland. Freaking pee off at WOW Airlines. I had to take a pee and was about to go the lav when it was announced we were starting our descent and everyone had to return to their seats. Okay, I thought I could hold it for another 20 minutes, but no, we got into a holding pattern. So it's been about 45 minutes now and I'm feeling the pressure and I'm just about to get up from my seat and head for the lav when they announce we're cleared to land. Okay so now so it seems like the slowest landing ever but now we're finally on the ground but I really 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 gotta go. We get to the gate, the engines shut off, everyone stands up waiting for them to open the door, waiting, waiting. Then the flight attendant comes over the loudspeaker informing us that the pilot has accidentally stopped a few feet short of the jetway and would everyone take their seats, please. While they get a tug to pull the plane the last few feet to the jetway, now my eyes are tearing up as my bladder is about to burst. Everyone stands up again and we are waiting for what seems like forever. Finally I whisper to my wife I'm going to have to pee in the air sickness bag so she needs to shield me from view as best she can. I open the air sickness bag and just about to unzip when, the plane door opens. When I got into the jetway I sprinted past people walking up the ramp pushing them aside, sprinting into the concourse and into the closest bathroom, just in time. Since then I make frequent trips to the lab when flying on planes, you never know. <laughs> flying home from India I came down with Delhi belly. I was sitting in the toilet over Pakistan and Afghanistan vomiting and crapping while we were rolling over the Hindu Kush mountains. Worst part is on my connection to Chicago I got opted up to Lufthansa first, and did not get to enjoy the caviar and cheese cart. Well I did and instantly regretted it, and back to the toilet over Greenland. As an Indian, there's a bright side to this, you were crapping right over Pakistan. Got sick the day before I left Japan. Anything I ate I was in the bathroom 5 minutes later and it was never a pleasant bathroom break. Also developed a cough. The next day rolls around and I ended up feeling even worse. But I force myself to eat prior to the plane so that I can attempt to not eat on the plane. 10-ish hour flight. 
I laid in the terminal for about an hour and just now decided that I should go looking for Tums or the Japanese equivalent 20 minutes before my flight. So I'm running around the airport looking for a pharmacy or convenience store. Find one on the other end of the airport. Huge line. 5 minutes left and my buddy text me that boarding started. I'm at the front of the line. Get checked out and just a dead sprint to get back to my terminal. Get there just as my group starts boarding. It went a lot better than I planned. My whole row empty bearing my seat. The dude across the aisle from me hooked me up. Cough drops. Tums. Tylenol. He even gave me his bread from meals and offered to let me use his battery pack to charge my phone. Still felt terrible. Got home and got even sicker. But wherever you are dude. You're a lifesaver. This story would have been a lot worse without you. Not just one. Not just two. Not even just three. Four. Four screaming babies that refused to go to sleep and instead turned what would have been a mild three and a half hour flight into one of the single worst experiences of my life. It was like the screams of the damned in the deepest pits of heck. My only comfort was that I was not alone in my misery. Wait until they are all sound asleep. Fake a huge loud coughing fit to wake them all up crying again. Was on an Emirates flight and went to the toilet. Opened the door and lo behold. This girl was riding this guy, who was sat on the toilet. After a few seconds of eye contact with the blonde haired chick, I didn't really feel the need to go to the toilet anymore and threw up. I was quite young and didn't know what they were doing. My parents found me and saw what was happening in the toilets, and they, well, had words with the couple. TL. DR. Caught couple screwing in the toilets, and my parents gave me the sex talk on the plane. Seriously people, the doors lock. Ate dinner at a restaurant in Newark airport. Boarded plane bound for Oslo, approximately, 8 hours. 2 hours in I'm just chilling and watching movies when I suddenly start feeling weird. I'm cold sweating and just not feeling my general self. I decide to try and walk it off and just splash my face with water in the restroom. Suddenly I am projectile vomiting everywhere in the bathroom. When I was done, more vomit was outside the toilet than in it. I had food poisoning, and the next 6 hours were living heck. It was so bad that I don't even remember it anymore. I just zoned out between running to the bathroom, and knocking asking the person to please come out if it was occupied, and sitting back in my seat listening to classical music with puke bag in hand to try to calm down. Zero stroke 10 would do it again. As a bonus I had also vomited a bit on myself, so the poor people sitting next to me had to smell it the rest of the way as well. I'd recently gotten dumped by the person I had thought I was spending my life with, but already had tickets bought for a trip. So I went. On takeoff there was a huge amount of turbulence and the plane was shaking so much I thought it was about to come apart in midair. And I suddenly realized. I didn't care. I even welcomed the thought of it. I realized that the last half year I'd only kept going because I was, pardon the pun, an autopilot. I understood that nothing meant anything to me anymore. I'm better now. United. Pre 9-11. It was a Sunday and I was going back to Cali because my leave was over in the service. When I go to check in, the lady says the plane's not even close to full. So seat yourself. You don't need a ticket. I'm thinking okay. Sounds great. Get on plane. A lot more people on it than I was expecting. Find a seat. Some guy comes up and says excuse me. I think you're in my seat. Flight attendant comes, asks for my boarding pass. I tell her what they told me. She says the flight is full, and since I don't have a boarding pass, I had to get off the plane immediately. I tried to explain again, and that if I didn't get on that flight, that I would be a wall. This is where she went 0100 yelling at me saying tfo or the police will be called and they'll escort me to jail. I was p obviously, and tried again to explain that I paid and wasn't leaving. As I was being escorted off by her and her 2B friends, someone in the way back pointed out how there was an empty seat. Ended up sitting there and the flight was sold out. We'll never fly United again. Ever. It seems United never changed. Was trying to fly home to NH from New Orleans for Thanksgiving while on a break from college. I had a layover in Knoxville. The layover flight got delayed because they were having a terrible snowstorm and we had to wait for it to pass before we could take off. Five hours later, I'm in the air headed home. Flight goes mostly normal for the two, 
One stroke two-ish hours it was supposed to last. The pilot comes on and says that we should be making our final descent towards the airport. I'm thinking it's probably another 30 minutes or so before we actually touch ground. 20 minutes go by and the pilot comes back on. He tells us that the storm we had to wait out in Knoxville moved faster than they thought it would and was now over the airport and keeping us from landing. He told us that, instead of diverting us to another airport like Logan or maybe to New York, they were turning the plane back around and going back to Knoxville. And we did. Got back to the Knoxville airport about 4. 1 stroke 2 hours after we had taken off. It was completely dead. They gave me a voucher for a local hotel and got me on a flight out the next day. The next day. Thanksgiving day. I was finally on a plane back to NH. My luggage however, was not. I had to have my dad come pick me up at the airport at like 6am and drive me to the closest Walmart to buy new clothes so I had something clean to wear to Thanksgiving at my grandparents because apparently the Alcatraz Psycho Ward, outpatient facility t-shirt I used to wear while flying, wasn't really Thanksgiving family holiday appropriate. That shirt will keep you from accidentally being bumped to first class. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.